There it goes. It says I'm live. Evening, everyone. How are you? Mark here. Welcome to my workshop in uh, very sunny Cornwall today. Uh, welcome along. Tonight, we're going to do a bit of, well, basically my bread and butter stuff now, but what pays the bills. Um, for whatever bills I have. I'm a wood turner. I've got, I've got loads of bills, haven't I? I'm buying doors and stuff. So tonight, I'm going to be turning. These are legs for vanity units. It's a hotel down in Falmouth that's having a renovation. And a local joinery firm asked me if I could do uh, these legs. They're double units and single units. So one of the, the double unit has two sinks, so they have six legs. And the single unit has four legs. And I've got a pattern that I have to work to. And I'm down to my last four to do, which are back there by the stool. This is one of them. So I thought I'd run these off tonight so you guys can see how using a pattern, you can recreate um, legs that are exactly the same. Well, as near as exactly the same. Helping me out tonight, I have got my esteemed Hugh Williams, Doug from Woodspun Round. And Wayne the Woodturner from Good Wayne evening, Wood peeps. How to do? <laughs> They're going to look after you. So if you've got any questions, a uh, couple of question marks or a couple of capital Qs, put the question <clears> in, <throat> and they will fire the questions back to me. If I can't answer them, I'm sure one of these two can. And uh, let's just get on with it. I'm going to be wearing safety glasses. So let me just show you first. Uh, change camera. So I'm going to take these specky ones off. And put, I can't see anything. Put these ones on. <laughs> and then I will put, put myself on solo screen. And change camera back again to, we said that one, didn't we, Wayne? The one that doesn't work. What a surprise. <laughs> well, it did a minute ago. It did a minute ago. It was. Try that again. Let's try that again, shall we? See if desk works again. There it is. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> we knew it worked. <laughs> yeah, we did. It's like we were almost professionals. We did check all this before we started. We yeah. Did, right? So be just before Wayne starts reading the names out, this, I don't know if you can see, it's got the pattern drawn on the, on the board. The client gave me this uh, story stick or storyboard to work from. So I'm just going to transpose the lines from this onto the spindle, and then away we go. So how many of these have you done already, Mark? Uh, when I've done this four, it'll be 24. Excellent. OK, let's see who's in. Gerard's in. Evening, Gerard. Uh, Roy's in. Uh, Andy. Bundy Raw, I'm sure Lucy will be in here somewhere as well. Terry Bartlett from Plymouth, there. Uh, Woodturner's in. Roger Kent. Oh, Lucy is there. There she is. Ward Wilson's in. Even Ward. Roger Kent. Uh, Wivy's in. Daniel Betson. I don't know if Daniel, I that's, Daniel. that's Daniel's my uh, apprentice. All right. Evening, Daniel. And. Uh, Jenna's Craft and Creations. Good evening, Jennifer. Andy, door 60's in. Going down the list. Rob's in from Clingsville. I hope you noticed the um, the stand in the background oh, oh, yeah, there, hold Rob. On, hold on. Just do the, uh, do the gratuitous. There you go. <laughs> Hello. Look at that. DJ. <laughs> DJ Brinkley's in, Steve Hill. Still going down. Barry Chitty. Shane's in. Evening, Shane. Shane Hurst, that is. Uh, 
Oh, Ben Jammon's in. Could be trouble ahead. Mm. Nice, piece on the, nice piece of walnut on the lay there. <laughs> Spindles from walnut. I'm still going down. Oh, Kim's in. Hi, 30, Kim. Seconds, 30 seconds, did you say, Mark? About 30 seconds, maybe. I'm competing against Corey. Okay. Kev's in. Evening, Kev. All right, darling. Not Kev, sorry. Kev, you're not, not darling, Kev. No, Kim's not darling, darling. Kev. That, that was, that was yeah. yeah. Uh, Lewis is in. Hello. Huey Shed's in. Jerry. Terry Cox. Brian with the Y. That would Martin just, Ford. Hello, Martin. Just stop there a sec, Wayne. Yeah, no bother. Two two reasons I'm doing these lines all the way around. So when this piece is spinning, I get a continuous line to follow. And a top tip I was shown, when you're drawing lines with a set square, don't put the set square where you think the line needs to be drawn. Put your pencil where the line is and bring the set square up to the pencil then you're always spot on top tip okay i will carry on again oh roy's lost his dongle for his jabra that's not good that's mm -hmm. not good because they're expensive mm -hmm. kim's just said good. yeah kim's just said she's the one without the mustache <laughs> <laughs> and Douglas Mungham's in evening Douglas and we're down uh, to the bottom I have fantastic news for everybody Kim is going to be on the stand with me Rob and Gavin at Harrogate and me and Wayne <laughs> and Mick Hughes and she will for a small price take selfies with anyone I may uh, well, at, at Harrogate, I may well be on other stands as well. <laughs> sure Got them know. lined up, do you? Well, hello, everybody. It's good to see you tonight, today, this afternoon, this evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Scott just come in from Hampton Wood Turn this evening, Scott. Hey, Scott. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining me. It's not really anything exciting tonight. I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kim, Kim just said that I'm the one with the beard. Lord. You're the one with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kim's quite partial to a beard, as long as it's well trimmed. I'm seeing nothing. Yeah. Right. So, as a habit, I always start. The first section I do is down the bottom, get this done. Um, I do tend to leave the foot part, which I'm sure I haven't. Ah, oh, I thought he had. I missed two lines. There you go. Oh, please, you that looking big. Yeah. Uh, um, Lionel's just come in. Paul Hoyton has come in. Oh, I miss Paul. Oh, yeah, there he is. We just came in. Sorry, folks. I just kind of take this round again. I leave the ball <coughs> foot mark to the end because it's a sphere for the foot. But I do the uh, I do all the pommels first, so I cut in all the pommels. Basically, it's a pommel. Then a cove, so it's a sweeping taper. Then a pommel, then a pommel, with another sweeping cove taper. Then a pommel, and a pommel, into a sphere. And the bottom of the sphere <coughs> gets cut off flat. Freehand sphere? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, David J. Heath? Nice one. <laughs> Tailstock, the uh, tool rest moved into position so that the tool rest is parallel 
with my bad ways. I've got to ask, Mark, since, since how you, you're doing a, a fair bit of this work now, are you going to invest in a, a second banjo with the long tail rest? Do you know, I, I answered a question on one of the groups this week about that. Somebody else was asking. And it did get me thinking that I probably will. Uh, I did because, see your answer to that uh, question. Yeah, I mean, the cheap, cheap alternative... Just buy another banjo, go to a local engineering firm, and they'll make you one up. There's no rocket science in it. It's just a 30 mil stem with a long piece of steel. <clears throat> these, are only, right. these are only cast. You can make them yep. as, as cheap or as expensive as you want. Right, so. Full speed. Two and a half thousand. 2,300. Now the double lines, the first line there, I don't know if you can see, maybe do. Is that the, the one towards the tail stock? We can see yeah. all the lines, Mark. Can you? Yeah. Do that. We can't now. Can't now. <gasps> uh, let's stop. I'll stop changing the camera. Right, so <laughs> the, working from the bottom, the top line is the line where my curve starts and the bottom line is where my line, my, the pommel cuts in. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Huey is in. Hiya, Huey. Hi, Shug. <laughs> I guess we ought to say Shug because nobody knows who Huey is. So there I've cut, there's my curve. You can just see the curve. That's just hitting the corners of the line. But I haven't gone right the way down to solid wood yet. So I don't come at it from this side anymore. I come at it from this side. Huey's asked how many of these legs are you repeating? And you just answered that a few minutes ago. 24 in total. 24 are done, yeah. These are the last four. So now I'm down to solid wood. Cut through the square. And I'm down to solid round. Okay. So just on to the next one. When you're actually doing that type of cut, um, what I found, somebody told me this a lot of years ago. Even if you go in with a straight cut at an angle it actually looks like a curve once you finish the cut mm -hmm. kev saying hasn't it been a lovely 20 degree c day today folks no kev it's been bloody cold up here that one's done now these center lines that I've done here on my narrowest point on the cove will come to those later on because that's where I do my calipers. And this is where with a double cove you have to remember which way is which because they're opposite. There's one curve that way, one curve that way. Don't 
Douglas, I wished I lived on the top of Scottish Mount. I wish. <laughs> you live in the lowest valley, don't you? Yeah, I do live in a very low valley. Around about, I think it's about 64, 68 foot above sea level. Mm. Right, last pommel. This one curves this way. Nobody's asking. The, the, what type of wood are you using, Mark? It's tulip. Tulip. This is a wood that turns very, very easily. Getting nice and clean at this stage, so I don't have to go back to him too much. That one, I think I just need to go just a little bit deeper. So I've hit my corners, so I don't want to go in. Gerard has said he's gotten his, some of his tickets for the Olympics in Paris in 2024. Oh, nice. He said it's a bit early, but I think he's right on time. <laughs> I bet yeah, those won't last long. He's right on time, too. Yeah. I would think they'll go quick. So, right, Mark. Oh. Since how nearly all the lanes are gone, do you want to try and have a look at the, the overhead so people can see the, the sort of shape that's yep. coming in? The only problem with the overhead, I can't get the whole thing in. Yeah, I, yeah, we start here. That. Yeah. That'll be the first one. So I'll do the ball foot, which is just here. I'll do that with the other cameras. But so now we've got the pommels cut in. Roll chamfered in, okay? Or scalloped. Now these ones don't have the lamb's tongue. Did anybody watch the Axminster live a few? couple of weeks ago, where I kind of do apologize. I kind of called Colwyn out. I said, I said show us a lambstone, Colwyn. He goes, what's a lambstone? <laughs> <laughs> a lambstone is where you, you scallop in. It's almost like an OG on a pommel. So with a spindle gouge, you come in higher than the line and you take a dish out and then go down in. Yeah. But those, I've, I've already done all of those. These ones are just normal now. Right. Douglas is asking me, is it cheaper to get a slab or a plank than buying blanks? It is definitely cheaper, Douglas. Uh, what you've got to understand when you're buying a wood turning blank or a ball blank especially is that people are charging for them turning it down and around. If you've got a decent um, bandsaw, it's a lot cheaper buying a plank of wood and doing your own ball, doing your own ball blanks. And Ben just... is that is asked you, Mark. So sorry to interrupt. Uh, ben has asked you. Uh, can you show us how you do an elephant here, Mark? <laughs> no. <laughs> Out of walnut. Oh, come on. Yes. Wow. 1,600 pounds for the opening ceremonies. It's not even in a, in a stadium, but down no, on the river. Six, that's, that's 1,600 euros. Oh, excuse me, euros. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Rogers asked you a question, Doug. Going to the AAW. Yes, I am. Uh, AAW is uh, about an hour and a half southwest for me. Um, I've got a pocket full of stickers ready to go, and so Excellent. I'm excited about it. 
Nice. Uh, Douglas has also uh, got another question for me. Wet or seasoned? Either way, <laughs> either way, Douglas, it's still cheaper. Yeah, slabs are generally always going to come out cheaper. Uh, every oh, once definitely. in a while. If, if, every if, once if, in a while, you find a weird one, but. If if anybody has got a, a, a decent sized bandsaw, it's got ball blanks on. You're much better off buying uh, pl- planks or slabs, mm-hmm. because people charge for uh, the, the charge for seasoning the wood, the charge for cutting the wood to the the right dimensions and everything. Whereas if you buy a plank, you can make your own sizes up. <laughs> Yeah, Martin says cheapest wood. Uh, I think Phil Anderson calls it FBTR, found yep. by the road. Found or the other term for it is FOG, found on ground. Found, on ground, found yeah. on ground. We don't get a lot of that over here, I've got to say. I was, uh, well, I drive down the country roads every week anyway, and... Uh, Golly, there's constantly wood on the side of the road. If I had time, I could stop and pick up all kinds of wood. But I've got, I'm I'm kind of wood poor right now. All right, so what I've done there is I've just sized these down to my maximum diameters. So this end and this end are the maximum diameter. And then that's the maximum diameter for the thinnest part. Now, I do get a bit of vibration off of this. I do most of it with a spindle roughing gouge. Now, if everybody notices what Mark's doing here, um, on his right-hand side, that's the teal stock. And what he's actually doing, he's working back from the teal stock towards the head stock. That way, when he gets the, the thinnest part of the wood down the tail stock, he's still got a lot of support back at the headstock to cut down on the vibration that's, uh, that might happen. Yep. Chris at Bailey Woodworks has joined us. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Chris has been doing some pretty good work over on his channel. A lot of shorts, but a lot of uh, 10, 15 minute videos doing some really nice work. For any of you that don't follow uh, Chris, uh, Billy Woodworks, go across and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Douglas has said, that he goes looking on the beach, but if I do find anything, he's worried about the salt in the wood that will damage things. I know a lot of people that, that do turn driftwood, and I don't see many of them having a lot of problems with turning driftwood. No. Well, yeah, I agree with you there. I've turned driftwood. You can get, you can get a bit of sand in it. Give it a good wash out with a pressure washer or high pressure hose just to get the worst of it off. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not so much the salt that's a problem, but the sand that's embedded. But, I mean, it's going to dull your tools, but that's why you have a sharpening system. You can see I'm getting vibration there. So I'm just going to ease off. Very light cut. Just support the back of the wood. A bit of a tweak.
And I'll just bring the bulk out in. They're right at that flat edge from the parting tool. Just blend this in. The rescue cup. So Chris from Billy Woodworks is saying, give a thanks to Doug and I, and he's also said he's been very busy at work, so videos have slowed, but he has got some good projects in, edit in editing now. Uh, that There's that four-letter word cropping up again. Work. Work. <laughs> No, people might think that um, this is a bit of a, maybe a, a ponderous, is, is that the right word, type of project? But what you've got to realise is that Mark is explaining what he's doing tonight, and he will probably uh, be doing this a fair bit faster if he was just in the workshop, yeah, turning I was, the leg. I would be. I would be. And I'm, I'm doing this to get a really, really good finish off the tool because they don't want to sand with one grit. Douglas has said uh, they had a bad storm a while ago and bits of the pier and breakwaters washed up. He got given a piece and it weighs a ton. Yeah, probably because it's soaking wet, Douglas. That's why <laughs> Water, that is. Waterlogged. <laughs> hmm, I missed that. Looks like Lucy must have gotten some from a church car park. Yeah, she said, that, she said that earlier. Hmm. I, I I hope it was in a pile for taking and not uh, some you just picked up and took on your own. <laughs> Pete would never do that. No. Right. Kev at uh, 9K Creations said, if there's a lot of vibration or bounce, would it not be better to use a steady? Uh, right. Okay. I'll answer this one first and then uh, Mark yep. can come in. Right. He's got a lot of bulk at the, the headstock end of this, and he's not going really very thin at the bottom end. So the vibration, you, you can counteract that vibration. And with the thickness that Mark's turned here, I don't really think you need a steady. What do you say, Mark? Yeah, steadies are great, but they're not fast. Uh, they're a bit of a faff. When you've got a lot of these to do in a run, it's actually quicker not to bother using it. And because I've got the square pommel in the middle, that's about where I'd want the steady to be. And I've got nothing but square corners. So yeah. I can't use the steady no, where I want Brian, it to be. Brian's also come into that and said, wouldn't the skew give a, um, a good finish with less chatter? Yep would give a better finish but it would still have the same amount of chatter yeah you'd probably still you'd probably still get the same type of vibration there but mm -hmm. it's it's minimal the the vibration that mark is getting is minimal twisted pete is in hey pete hope you're feeling better hiya pete hi pete yeah kev said he forgot about the square pommel <laughs> yeah, Pete's right. He says, wherever you put a steady, it's instantly in the way. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, that, that, that all depends. If, if you use a steady like uh, Steve Jones does, 
it's not in the way because it's yeah, he uses the, the lathe. He uses the, the, the pressure one. Yes. Which yeah. pushes against. But yeah. he still has, even if I had one of those, where could I you, put it at the moment? You, you would have to I'd make have to a round here. spot first, yes. Yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to cut a round bit, put that steady down. <laughs> the problem with spindle turning is that you can't show off your SK-114. <laughs> oh, that's true. I, can't even, I haven't even got any cameras pointed at them. Right, right. <laughs> So what Mark's doing now, you can actually see that he's in his right hand, he's holding on to the, the roughing gouge. His left thumb is steady in the roughing gouge and his fingers are supporting the wood from the back. Mm -hmm. Sort of. <laughs> sort of, okay, kind of. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> well, it's kind of like, um, you know, in a mechanic shop when they're truing up brake drums, they'll put a four or five big rubber bands around it. And all that's for is to stop the vibration. Um, stops that squealing. That oh, happens. Here, here we go. Somebody mentioned the skew chisel. He had to bring one out, didn't he? Yeah. You know, I remember... So you're still getting, still getting a lot of vibration. I, I remember back a couple of years ago, and it was only a couple of years ago, that this guy standing here turning this um this leg wouldn't dare to go anywhere near a spindle gouge i remember that myself the only thing a skew was good for was opening tins of of hampshire sheen is what he said exactly exactly and at the time i agreed with him but i'm using one now quite often Well, I've got Terry Bray to thank, Pete, Colwyn Way, and Steve Jones, and Richard mm -hmm. Finley, because uh, they've all given me advice. And I know what Pete will be saying right now. Drop a tour rest. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing just watching people who are good with the skew, how much that helps you to learn those skills and pick them up. I love the skew chisel. I really do. Oh, Drury's wood turners just come in. Well, hey, Drury. Yeah, if you look, because somebody did, asked. Did you notice that when Mark mentioned who who taught her, who taught him? Yeah, or advised him on the skew. He never mentioned me. Well, no, I didn't. You taught me how to use a bowl gouge paint. Let's be honest. <laughs> you can still there, there's still chatter marks in there, even with a skew. Mm. Just bouncing around just a touch, huh? It is particularly bouncy this evening. Don't worry about it. I understand what Brian is saying here. He says, I love the skew. Unfortunately, the feeling is not reciprocated. <laughs> I understand that all too well. Seems like just as I start feeling a little comfortable with it, it bites me back. Right. Now to get in square up against this pommel, turn your spindle roughing gouge right on its side, and that flat straight edge will go right in the corner. And that is, now the other thing you could do is actually use a parting tool, but you can actually use a rough and spindle gouge gouge as a parting tool. Uh, Kev said he's got to say I know the skew after Terry, Colwyn and Wayne. And Peter said 
Shatter marks on long spindles is why clink spore makes 80 grit gouge. <laughs> yeah, right, I've got any 80 grit. I've only got 120. Shall I just walk over here to, uh, you know, my uh, stand? 240 echoes there. Just gets a piece of JFlex. <laughs> Tear it beautifully. Abrasives. Brought to you by Klingspor. Kevin, thank you. I am just going to change just said, um, Once I learned to make catches and it didn't hurt me, I got loads better. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's half of it, just understanding that it's not actually going to hurt you. It throws the wood will throw the skew out of the wood, but that's about as far as it goes, typically. Right. Martin Ford said something on here. He said he made a baseball bat for an, for an American friend of mine. Um, really need the study for that. He says he couldn't buy one when he was in the U.S. because it's considered an offensive weapon. Is that right, Doug? No. Uh, no, I didn't Lord, think it was either. I've seen right. loads of American turners make baseball bats. Right. Uh, anybody can make one. Um Louisville Slugger, which has been kind of the standard in wood baseball bats since the beginning of baseball, really. Um, they're still in existence, still open, still making bats as fast as they can get them out. They do make some aluminum ones as well, but they make a far more wood bats than they do aluminum. And in fact, the pros, they, they're not allowed to use aluminum bats. Okay. You can go you can go through college, all the way through college with aluminum, but the pros have to have a wood bat. I used to have a Louisville Slugger. Absolutely. Every kid in America did at some point or another. Right. Uh, Roy, Roy has said, um, I was getting some chattering with a bull gouge today, even though it was just sharpened and was riding the bevel. Uh, I take it that was on a bull, Roy. You haven't said. You got the, there, there are various reasons why you will get chattering using a bull gouge on a ball, especially if it's on the inside of the ball. Gerald's having to go. Hi, Gerard. See you later, Gerard. Ben is saying to Rob from Klingspore, is the flex shared between brands? I've seen the, seen the name used between a few different companies. Yes, it is, Ben. G, G Flex uh, tends to be the the backing, I think it is, for the um, for the abrasive to go on. It just means it's 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 a it's a cloth backed flexible abrasive. Here's a question I'm going to ask uh, you, Wayne and Mark, just because it's uh, just because I'm new to all this. I'm hearing the lathe noise very loud. Is that just because we're on StreamYard? Uh, I didn't actually notice it that loud, to tell you the truth, Doug. I could barely hear you talking a while ago while Mark was taking those corners off. Oh, okay. uh, hold on. Let me just check my audio. Right, while no, Mark's, me, right, while chat, Mark's right? yeah, while Mark's doing that, um, Roy put in. Where is it? Oh, the, the the it was on the inside, right? That was on the inside of the bull when he was getting chattering. It it that has all got to do with the um, the approach of the tool on the inside of the bull. I'll try and explain, the, the, if you're in tomorrow night on me live, Roy, I'll, I'll try and explain that a, bit, a, um, a little bit better when I'm actually turning. Yeah, Kevin, Kev said yeah, it drowned out. Yeah, Kev, Kev said that was drowned out as well. Yeah. Might have been when I turned the extractor on. No, <laughs> it was, it was uh, the, the spindle roughing gouge on those corners. Well, sometimes it can't always cope with all of the right, noise. Right, right, right. That that may have been all it was. Now, because I've gone down to complete round, 
I need to put the uh, center line back on. I know it's not one line, it's the other. So I'll take this down to me, my maximum diameter for the centre. Are you coming into EUM tomorrow night, Mark? Yeah, sure. Right, if you can remember, um, when, when I turn the inside of the bowl, to try and explain uh, why you get some chattering when you, when you turn the inside of the bowl. If you can okay. remember that. If I can remember. Roy. Yeah. What I'll do is I just won't go to sleep tonight. And then uh, <laughs> I'll be all right to remember. <laughs> my wife would say, use your tools, meaning put a note in my phone or get a sticky note or something. Memory is a great thing. I wish I could remember <laughs> where it was. Right. Right, so that's down to diameter. We had a group that was uh, really good about some college scholarships, and they had a commercial on for a long time. The tagline was, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that applies to everybody, not just any one group of people, young or old. Oh, Rob's just Rob's saying that um, that they've uh, this is for Klingspore. They've almost finished a series uh, on YouTube videos explaining the basics of a business. Nice one, Rob. Yeah. That'll clear a bunch of things up for a lot of people. And Roy is saying that uh, the, the, with the chattering we were talking about uh, on his um, ball, I think it was, that's the first time it had happened for him. It's more about presentation. I don't know. I wasn't really concentrating on what you said, Wayne. But I, I've noticed with students with chatter, it's when they come off the bevel and they get onto the tip. <laughs> yes. Uh, more. Yeah. The, the, it, it's a bit difficult to explain, which is why I said to Roy that I'd, I'd try and show it tomorrow night. <laughs> Douglas is asking Rob if his videos if they cover using the house brick <laughs> a house brick is that the the gray ones or the red ones I mean that that's just um, that's just a, a ten of brazen isn't it <laughs> uh, thereabouts right Brian uh, with a Y is asking you Mark yeah how long would one of these legs take on a production run rather than a live? Uh, <laughs> gotta be careful in case the customer's watching. <laughs> 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 uh, right, these, these take 20 minutes. Well, yeah, in all fairness, that's that's with everything. Um, what takes an hour, hour and a half in a live would take us 30 minutes, maybe 45 at the most. Uh, if we're doing it with nobody around us, even to video for uh, for, you know, to, to record it, to put on video. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot quicker when you're in the workshop by yourself doing the production yeah. run. Yeah. Mark, I turned again. Crafts has just come in. Good evening, Mark. So has Zed. Hey, Zed. And Peter said the four hours each if the customer's watching. Yeah, four hours <laughs> each. <laughs> 
four hours. You have to remember as well, these, these corners aren't just called pommels, they're called bastard corners. Because I tell you, you crack your knuckles on them. Mm. They you all of a sudden don't feel very nice. Yeah, and if you happen to hit one with your rough and gouge, yeah, or anything that is that one bend. So I just touched start again. I just touched that corner with his finger. Then of course, that made me jump. Yeah, they'll talk to you quick, right. won't they? Oh yeah. Right. So that is right. Brian has said in um, about the the time you take to turn one. The only reason he asked was that he was a capstan lathe turner in engineering for 17 years, once upon a time. All right. Oh, Zed's in. Oh, my life. Yes. Here we go. Oh, my. Right. Right, Zed has just found two pristine, new-looking, is that six inch by eight inch by eight foot long pieces of lumber on the side of the road, with a free sign on them. Wow, this one, Zed. I hope you collected them. Right. Yes. Yeah. Roy says, Mark, just remember not to color them blood red. Yeah, that's true. All right. So, as Zed's also said, I see a rise of base for my lathe in the future. You've got a pretty big, um, you've got the Laguna 1836, have you not? That's, that's quite a big lathe anyway. Yeah, they that's the biggest one Laguna does, isn't it? I'm sure that's the one that Zed's got. And Terry yeah. Bartlett has said, apologies for tomorrow, Wayne. He'll be at his club teaching. Not a problem, Terry. Not a problem. Andy Bundy Row, I'm not even going to read that one out. Nope. Neither am nope. I. Nope. Nope. <laughs> We'll leave uh, that one alone. Ben, ben is asking, though, um, have you considered tweaking the story stick to make it easier, or would the client be a bit nif miffed? No, you can't. You, the, the story stick's given to me by the customer. So it has to be as they give it to me. Mm -hmm. And these these legs have been, while they look simple for all of us, these legs have been eight months designed by committee at the hotel. Oh, I know the hotel ain't much in, so that's fine. Okay. Um, me and the, the joiner who's making these units, we had these sussed out in about an hour and a half. When I did the quote, he showed me what he thought they want. I did the quote, Bob's your uncle, done and dusted. And then he showed the client and they discussed it for eight months. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, now, Zed has come back with uh, what I was saying about the, the, the Laguna. Uh, he's six foot eight inches tall. Um, so he wants to have a, a riser so he doesn't have to hunch you over. Sorry, Zed, I misunderstood what you were talking about there. I didn't realize you were talking about heightening the layers. I thought you were talking about heightening the centers. Yeah, raising that spindle up. Um, I'm not nearly that tall, but under my Nova 1624, I've got four by fours under each side, lifting it up four in. Oh well, three and a half. Um, Try to just get ahead of myself a little bit. I've got to take that down to round before I start turning it. You know what? One of the the best layers ever produced in the UK is the, the union graduate. Mm -hmm. And just about everybody I know 
that has a using union graduate has got um they've got them raised up um not not the center height raised up the actual lathe raised up because the majority of them were produced for using in schools right yeah so the spindle sits at about four foot something like that yeah maybe a little lower yeah so so a lot of adults have, have got to actually raise them up by four six inches right so it comes up to elbow height so the center comes up to elbow height as i remember the vb36 is pretty high isn't it it's a well the, no the, the vb36 is center height on my vb36 is elbow height same as uh your other lathe your main lathe? Yes, same as my other lathe, yeah. Yeah. I was grabbing a tape measure to see what mine is since I'm standing right here beside it. My center height right now is at 47 inches, which is three and a half inches higher than where, where it's manufactured. But okay. that's, that's above my elbow, well above my elbow. But I did that because at the time when I got this lathe, I was doing um, hollow forms a lot. Right. My back was killing me because for hunching over. Yeah. Don't like that one. It's funny how you have a favorite spindle couch, isn't it? It is. The wrong one. Uh, Andy said, uh, in that case, Wayne, Lucy would have no problem using one. The ideal lathe for Lucy, uh, uh, this is an answer to Andy, the ideal lathe for Lucy would be a union graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, Zed said the nice side effect of having my lathe so tall is that there aren't a whole bunch of people asking if, if they can use it <laughs> I guess not Mind you, I mean, it doesn't it really, to me, it doesn't matter what height the lathe is at. Uh, if I'm somewhere different using somebody else's lathe, it doesn't, really doesn't matter. And that's the same with, um, I'm sure we've mentioned Emma, uh, the tiny turner mm -hmm. in lives yeah. in the past. Now, Emma is four foot ten, and she never uses anything to stand on when she's using lathes or anything. She just uses... The lead that is there. Yes, she does. Uh, Sugar mm. said, my lead is currently very low. Maybe because it's on the floor. Now, <laughs> I've got to say, Sugar has probably got that on the floor just in case Andy comes around, EJK Woodworks, and he wants to use it. <laughs> Harsh. Harsh, Harsh but true. Harsh but, Harsh but true. true. But Shug isn't much taller, is he? <laughs> he's, he's at least two inches taller than the GK. At least two inches taller. Two whole inches, okay. Two whole right. inches. Just for anybody that comes in, came in late, these ball feet are cut square off at the end. Not, uh, not that I screwed it up or anything. Mark Stratton has come in. Hello, Mark Babe. Well, you can actually use a thin parting tool and you'll get a better cut. <laughs> yeah, Lucy said, as Emma says, you get used to being a short person in a tall person's world. Yes, yes. Huey says two inches, and that's proven now. <laughs> oh yes, um, we will probably see a photograph of that tomorrow night on my life. Oh, I imagine. <laughs> I better oh, not Jimmy's talk to. In. Hey, JP. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, JP. Hey. Now. Roy is. said, I have my lathe on a bench, on a bench height. It is set to my elbow, but I think I need to raise it a bit. 
The thing is, okay, we're all, <coughs> excuse me, we're all talking about uh, late IT and what's comfortable for people, uh, what the recommended is or, or what the average is supposed to be. Whatever you're comfortable with turning, that's what you're comfortable with. Yeah, absolutely. I hate to say it, but that looks like a table leg, Mark. It does, doesn't it? Round bottom. Let's go on to uh, see if that one's better. <laughs> there I was going to see if I could do two in an hour. And it's been an hour. Where's that gone? I well, usually take 20 minutes to do one of these. Yeah, but there's all <laughs> we'll, we'll talking and everything, Mark. Yes. Don't know. Anyway, so the next one we go up, same story stick, and that's, I'm not sure I like these squared off feet, but he does put, he drills these, puts an adjustable um, turny foot mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. plastic thingy. Right. Um, to obviously adjust for, but you can see the corners. Oh, that one's off a bit. Which one? <laughs> Immediate <laughs> panic. Yeah, don't do that. Whoa, wait a minute. That Which one's one? the same. <laughs> yeah. That one's off a little. Because the line's. Right, disappear. Kev's just said uh, how many more? Mark has only got three. I got more three more to do. do. Three, three more, more to do, and that'll be the last of twenty-four. Yes. And if all the others have been delivered, um, basically what I'll do is I will just show you the uh, JP the trying to start something. Uh, panics over. <laughs> so, right. So <laughs> take Mark engage. Just so you can see the whole process. All four sides. That's one end. Shugs just said, a turny, wormy, fluffy, woofy thingy. That one goes there. <laughs> now what do I do with me? Mule. There it is. And then Mark, they don't get old people. Put me proper classes. <laughs> right. Roy's the boy said, it's a bit out, around about 1.5 mil. Yep. <laughs> so Mark, there you go. Dead center. And then two, the other one. Joe Garofalo's just come in. Sorry, Joe, you've um, just about missed everything. I'll put this back on, uh, on tail stock, right? So, because I use sprung centers, that one goes in there. Right. And then the whole process. Starts again with another storyboard. Oh, same storyboard. Mark out all the way along. Lines all the way around. And away you go. Mm -hmm. That's the next one. And 20, 40, 60. An hour from now, I'll have these all done. There you go. So I'll bring the guys back in. The mouse <laughs> works. JP says, about time Mark turned something and managed to keep the wings on. <laughs> oh, oh, Jim, Jim. oh, that reminds me. I meant to have that plate in here. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, I've got the corners on. Be right back. This will go before he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming along tonight. Like I say, it wasn't, you know, a project. It wasn't a, it wasn't a bold, at least, you know. Turned enough of those over the last few days. Uh, Dan's going to be here with me tomorrow, and we're we're hitting 
the, uh, the green oak bowl. So we're going to be, he's going to be using the chainsaw and I'm going to be coring and rough turning. And you can't see it, but we've got, we've put hooks up in the ceiling here today and we've got tarpaulins, which basically just enclose me in and the shavings don't go anywhere apart from this sort of 10 foot square. Very nice, Doug. Hold on, let me put you on. Got that second band of texturing in there and colored nice. and everything. And Mark was all upset. I had four corners when I got through. Yeah. <laughs> so and you still, got four corners. still got four corners. Yep. Yep. It took, takes back. a certain takes a certain special someone to be able to take the corners off, you know. <laughs> Those broken wings. Uh. <laughs> hey, that's the second time you've sung. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna get these done. Thank you ever so much everybody for popping in. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I don't know when my next live is. It might be next Tuesday. I don't think it will be actually. I'm teaching next Tuesday and Wednesday. I don't usually do lives when I teach because it's just it's too much. Uh so probably Doug, it would spun round next week. Nope, I'm on vacation next week. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, might, it might just be a Q&A then. I don't think I'll be able to return him. Um, see, this one, I'll just notice it's got a big... big uh, Jimmy's yes. asking, what are you teaching, Mark? <laughs> I'm teaching how to suck eggs. <laughs> oh, me. How how to pack a box of wood shavings? Yeah, where is it? There it is. Take in. Bearded weirdo. <laughs> Teaching how to use sandpaper next week. There you go. Uh, how to walk over there, pick up sandpaper, and walk back. Can I just say, because a couple of people have asked me today, I am not going to be doing the distribution business from here. That is a display cabinet which will display all the packs of sandpaper that I will be doing. My distribution is up on the industrial estate somewhere else. So I don't run the distribution from here. This is residential area. JP says what? How to sew a That's patch on? Patch on. <laughs> Shut up. Then, you you walk into them every time, Mark. You know, walk into them every time. I know. He's, he's, well, I keep him happy. <laughs> right, so it's, the numbers are dropping. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming in. I'm going to press the button. Night, night, everybody. Good night. You too, You're so welcome. Thank you. <laughs>